you. So welcome, welcome to Conversations of the Heart. Man, it's your boy T-Tail, man. And, uh, you know, excuse us for being a little bit late. You know, my man 360 was lacing me uh, with a fresh cut. So, you know, I had to take a little time on it. Um, but, you know, wanted to come to you. You know, I, I've known this brother for a long time about entrepreneurship, um, faith, things like that. It's my man 360 right here, Mr. Ryan. What's going on? What's up, good brother? World. Yeah. How's everybody doing? Um, it's a pleasure to sit down with this brother. We've had many conversations in the shop about just, you know, forward movement and, and just, you know, willing to do things better for ensuring our legacies mm -hmm. and everything like that. So we've just yeah. shot back and forth all types of ideas and aspirations mm -hmm. and everything. You know, down it's barbershop yeah. talk. So yep. you literally talk about everything in life when you in a chair. And, you know, it helps me out, you know, just being a barber. Like, I find myself in these positions, you know, all the time. Like, mm -hmm. it's funny, like, we went to high school together. For we weren't in the same year. <laughs> nah. 365 <laughs> days in high school years is like dog years. So, you know what I'm saying? We wasn't in contact like that. Right. So we, we really bonded after high, school, after high school. You know what I'm saying? As Facts. grown men, we was just sitting, talking, and building and everything. So, mm -hmm. You know, this this is part of the conversation. I'm happy you're doing things like this, and Appreciate you, I think bro. conversations like this need to be broadcasted mm -hmm. because um, they're not happening like that. Not at all. Know? And, and and this is very important just, just for us as a people. You know, just just blacks and everybody across the whole diaspora. You know, we need to have these talks and mm -hmm. reconnect with each other and Facts. and you know and build. become become that family that 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 we supposed to be you know and 100%. unify so mm -hmm. that's the point of us being here yeah definitely man and um you made a speech at, um you know right right when you opened your shop and con congratulations on that and that, you know we was rocking man from from when you were just you know cutting hair you had your own chair mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and and this has always been I think it, a goal of yours, aspiration of yours, was to own your own. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Um, and then we, so to see that that dream come to fruition, mm -hmm. um, I was like, man, I'm just so proud of you, brother. Um, Thank you. Because um, we need to see more of that. And you shared just a lot of the stories. And when you opened your shop, and I was there, and I was blessed to be there. So thank you for that. Oh, no problem. No um, problem. And um, you shared a story about entrepreneurship, man, um, mm -hmm. and what that means to you. So, you know, if you could just right. share a little bit yeah, about that. Yeah, I'll get into it. Um, it started, my entrepreneurship journey started a long time ago. So my parents spoke this into me, especially mm -hmm. my pops. Oops. Mm -hmm. Especially, pardon me, y'all. Yeah, the wind is a little crazy. Yeah, the wind is a little crazy, but, you know, we're making it work. <laughs> so, um, especially my dad. Um, my mm. dad uh, was an employee at Con Edison for 33 years, retired mm. and everything like that. And uh, I saw the, just the grind, the 10 hour, 12 hour, sometimes 24 hour shifts. Like he was a main supervisor for a bunch of the different Con Edison right, players. Right, right. So they were sending him, I mean, any way there was a problem, they were sending him to go fix it. Whether wow. it's an employee problem or the boiler blew up right, or right. Trans, the transmitters went on a right. fritz and everything. They sent him to go fix it damn near everything and right. he was making it happen mm -hmm. so you know just just being a kid you want to be around your, your parents like luckily I, I was able to spend super time with my mom's love you what's up mom <laughs> but I was Shut I was able moms. to spend time with her but I always wanted to spend more time with with, with pops you right. know what I'm saying and just him being away so much right. to provide for us it was like I know you got to do this but I'm <laughs> selfish I'm a kid like I'm selfish <laughs> I want you to be around right so you know he did that and just just through life I, I just felt like he poured his his soul into that job and there wasn't much of a comeback off of that I, right. you know it, it wasn't much to to show for all those years the blood the sweat tears and everything right and while he was doing that he was speaking entrepreneurship into me so i, wow. I got to watch the other side of it wow as it was happening you know what i'm saying yeah, and rest his soul and everything like that like he left this earth with a with a legacy and you know we got tons of people at that that want to you know carry on and be like him such as myself right and you know it's it's it was powerful for me to just experience the process of you know stepping out there mm -hmm. on my own and not knowing whether i succeed or not mm -hmm. and going through the grind of trying to build a clientele i knew right. at one point it was worth it and you know i'm starting to see the payoff from that and the i fruits, put in yeah. 
I put in a third of that time to to wa start working towards my own where my pops put in 30, 30 right. plus, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And just the, 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 the fact that that he spoke it into me, that was already inspiration. That was, that was my hero. Mom's too. Like, I ain't going to forget you either, but <laughs> that was my hero for real. Right. So he, he spoke it into me, and I became what he spoke into me. Man, yeah. that's super powerful, man. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like, when you bring up entrepreneurship, people mm -hmm. think that you're, you know, that you're kind of crapping on the nine to fivers yeah. or, you know, people who are working for a living, you know, mm -hmm. every day on, you know, getting the paycheck. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Um, you worked, you know, you, yeah. you, you didn't just pop up with your own shop. Right. Like right. you had to put in the work, right? You had mm -hmm. to grind mm -hmm. to get to this. So it's not that we're saying that just because you're working nine to five, you know what I'm saying? That that's not what it is. Mm -hmm. We all have to build, we all have, have right. to grow. And sometimes right. those nine to five can sharpen your your skills and, and everything that's in your that's in your tool belt so mm -hmm. that you can get to that to that next level mm -hmm. if that's what you want. So if, right. if, if entrepreneurship is for you, you know, then there's nothing wrong with working a, a nine to five, mm -hmm. stacking your bread. Building and, and putting into your business, right? right. Um, but it's very important, also, you know, black ownership. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I know that's something that that mm -hmm. you spoke about, and that means so much to you. Yeah. You know. So, what do you think? So, what are your thoughts on on black ownership? You know what I'm saying? Black Black ownership is is it's paramount during these times because you know anybody here in this in this live knows what's going on out in the world, mm -hmm. and I, I'm. I'm very tired of leaning on people that don't look like me, mm -hmm. that don't, you know, that haven't came up the way I've come up or had the right. experiences right. that I've had. And, you know, I've, I've looked at other groups, other, other races, other nationalities and, right. and how they get down. For one, you know, the ownership stems from a trust in one another. That, that's right. where it starts because not, mm -hmm. not a lot of these people are going to banks and then getting loans like that so right. it starts internally mm -hmm. and that 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 boils down to the family the family unit mm -hmm. and you know with the family unit you know you get to pull your money together and now you have like a small economy within right. your unit mm -hmm. like in a black community like our money like i've read that our money stays in our community for about six hours compared to other wow. races where it'll be months years. sometimes years, years you know depending on who's doing what mm -hmm. and the importance of having black owned businesses that for one, you'll inspire someone to be like, you know what, I want to own that store, or yeah. I want to run this operation over here, mm -hmm. or I want to do this and that. And not to knock entertainers and and sports of athletes and everything like that, because be that's necessary. It's just unfortunate for us that it's looked at as one of the only options. Right. You know, you either right. entertaining or or you're a supreme athlete. That's your way out. There's so many other ways out. Right. Right. And right. you know, it, it boils down to the thought process, and a lot of it starts at home mm -hmm. internally. So, right. so luckily, you know, I was I was fed the the entrepreneurship. I could have been fed other things that I might not be sitting here talking to you. Right. So, so it it all boils down to 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 that. Just um just unity in itself. You know, and, and unity with your economics. Mm -hmm. is 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 key and right. having everybody in a in a position mm -hmm. to keep the the money within the, money. the community is is essential as well right so um black black ownership is, is important and mm -hmm. i think that's one of the ownerships that's missing in this country right and, you know? and and when you own your own business then you actually control who you hire right right and give other opportunities to people who maybe would have gotten looked looked over you right know, i think when i was in you know, working in a staffing agency and, and, and working in HR, you know, then it's like I was the one who was kind of uh, in charge of, okay, well, let me see what candidates I do have mm -hmm. um, and see, like, who can I give an opportunity to that really probably wouldn't get a look right? if, right. I if, if Terrence wasn't their representative, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I think it's always important to have um, a seat at the table, right? Yeah. Um, and which you've uh, now provided that for, you know, the barber that's working for you now. Right, right, right. Um, so first of all, pluck your shop, man. Where is your yeah. shop located? Bro? Okay, Let um, me know. Uh, I have a shop called the Concierge Grooming Parlor, located at Sunnyside Queens. Mm -hmm. uh, the exact address, um, I'll get it to you guys. Um, it's a forty-seven dash oh eight thirty ninth place, mm -hmm. right off of Forty Seventh Avenue, the Fortieth Street stop on the Seven Train, close to the city. 
close to Brooklyn, close to a lot of points everything, yeah. in the city because we're relatively close, mm -hmm. you know, to, to Queens Plaza and everything mm -hmm. like that. Um, and he's talented. Like, I, oh, thank I'm you. To <laughs> you see this here? I'm just, yeah, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just telling you, like, yeah. He's, He's on point. We all we we all grown this out. Like it's, I used to have the waves. I don't know if y'all know me like that, but I had waves no more. I, I got yeah. curls now. I'm letting it fly. This yeah. quarantine did me something different. I, I didn't even want to look at my clippers. I was depressed because the shop wasn't open, and we, we're gonna get to that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's 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 vital for, for us to talk about the things we going through right. internally yeah, instead of trying to you know be so tough all the time because you know me i'm always men men that. when they when they want a tough guy stuff and they not expressing themselves in a certain way you're, you're gonna know. go out on the street you're gonna wild out you're and then that's what mm -hmm. i'm gonna say it that's what the enemy wants right you know what i'm saying and we we definitely gotta you know trust one another even with our own emotions and thoughts mm -hmm. to express that to one another that's that's key that's why i mm -hmm. like being a barber so much because people open up to me yeah you know what i'm saying that kind of helped me open up to others you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying just having that experience like damn if you could level down to me i could damn sure level down to For anybody sure. else and sure. you know reach out to people and just talk about the real mm -hmm. so um and, and 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 with that said like how how was managing because here's here's the thing you opened your business in december mm -hmm. that, that was the grand opening right yeah. so the momentum is there yeah you're building you do your the ribbon cutting, uh -huh. the the grand opening party, it's amazing. Don't forget the engagement. I love you, See, T. I was getting ready to get there. I was getting ready to get there. You know, and then you know, and it, it was the you know the engagement mm -hmm. party, and mm -hmm. um, and then not even what three months later, mm -hmm. COVID, the yeah. coronavirus, yeah, and COVID happens, um, and then you have to shut down. And mm -hmm. I know sometimes that can take you from a real real high yeah and then shoot you down kind mm -hmm. of to a, a real low uh, so so how did you process that um internally and how did that affect your mental health well um when i opened up the shop or when i was going through the process open up the shop right. i was going through so many hurdles and hurdles and hurdles and i told myself once i was able to actually you know get the location mm -hmm. sign the lease and everything i told yeah. myself it's not over right you know the hardships aren't over mm -hmm. you know problems aren't gonna stop you just reached a different level level mm -hmm. so i always like i was preparing myself for anything that would come because you know when you when you have a, a property you have to take care of and mm -hmm. you know you got to make sure that that rent is paid which we're going to get into mm -hmm. in a little bit <laughs> you know it's a different concern level so i already i was trying to condition myself to just be ready for anything that would come my way right not for COVID. <laughs> not for COVID. I was not ready. I, I was no not was prepared. For like I, I didn't have none of that ready. I just knew there was gonna be something because you know it was almost like what Big said, more money, more problems. I, I think with with more advancement in business come new issues. Right. You know what I'm saying? 100. And a lot of it doesn't have to do with money. You can have all the money in the world and still have a bunch of issues that you actually have to solve yourself. Facts, facts. You know. So um, I already talked myself into it still was prepared still was you know jacked up mentally from having my profession stripped from me right and like that that you just open that you just just got, your open. baby your baby yeah. like just open, open. so mm -hmm. you know I'm, I'm getting settled in and you know I'm, I'm i'm just starting to you know enjoy the fruits of the labor and you know really getting into the fold and learning new things and i felt like the door was just shut this is Right when I was starting to get a little, little comfortable, get my mm -hmm. feet wet, if you will. Yep. So um, it, it messed with me, man. Um, I was, I was sad. Like that was a long car ride home after I had to shut down. I did that last day, mm -hmm. you know, and you know I stayed a little late, cleaned up, got all of my stuff together, and it was just a long ride home. Shed some tears. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that yeah, man need to admit <laughs> that, you know. Um, it's just something you feel like you work, you know, you work so hard for, and it's like, damn, at somebody else's whim, just like, like that. Now I can't work, you know. Yeah. And then, and, you know, you start thinking about other things, like, all right, I still got this insurance to pay. I still, this mm -hmm. landlord still needs this paper. Mm -hmm. Like, what I'm gonna do about unemployment? I gotta fill out SBA loans. You know? mm -hmm. Now I gotta, you know, potentially put myself in the red. Right by borrowing just to cover because I'm not working. So it was just a bunch of stuff going through my head. And it was like, damn, I opened the shop to avoid this, avoid this. 
you know, and you know, it, 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 it was definitely real. Um, thank you to my wife. Uh, I was able Shout out. to marry Woods now, Woods now. Yeah, um, man. So, um, you know, thanks to her, we was able to, you know, talk about a lot of stuff. I've been on a spiritual journey, you know, mm -hmm. the whole entire 2019. So mm -hmm. in February, I got baptized and, you know, you was there for the engagement. And then the I got married a, a week later. So 2019, like, I changed, like, everything completely. I closed out the closed out the decade really, really, really strong. Yeah. Um and you know, I, I had the support of uh, my wife and you know, she she helped me out through those times. She's an essential worker, so she was able to still go to work and that was a whole nother another, thing. another so thing. So we we were each other's crutch at, at that point because it was really rough. Mm -hmm. at, at her place of business, yeah. you know, she she works at a physician's office, mm. so you know, co-worker pass, and mm. you know, people mm -hmm. really being infected, so yeah. that already builds a certain anxiety. You mm -hmm. can't do it. You want to come in today, like, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm in on my side, like, damn, I wish I could work, you know, like right. I'm I'm just here, you mm -hmm. know. Ain't enough cooking in the world. I'm sorry, I just you, you cook every <laughs> yeah. day. Yo. And it's like, all right, I, I had enough. Facts, I want to just go out. You know, pick mm -hmm. something up, and it's like, yo, you can't do that. Word. So, it it, it definitely it, it messed with me. Like, I was definitely in a mind space. It was like, yo, I might, really might have to like sit down. Well, my confidence was shot, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, some days you just want to be left alone. Like, it's just mm -hmm. a lot of things that just go on when you feel like you're not the provider, mm -hmm. and you did so much to work towards towards becoming them. that. Mm -hmm. So. So it's, it's definitely, I talked to the bros about it, shout to FCF, you know, mm -hmm. I, I talked to them about it, definitely my wife, mm -hmm. moms, yeah. you know, my brothers, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, everybody pretty much through this time going through the same thing, and that, that helps out too, mm -hmm. and even speaking to some clients, big shout to my clients, they, you know, they, they call in, they checking in, you know, the first question asks, hey, you cutting? And then mm -hmm. the second question, you know, how you, how's, right. how's the family and everything right. like that. Shout out to my sister. My sister actually caught COVID and she she lost about like 20, 25 pounds and, you know, she recovered, but she went through it. So that was a, another thing. Another was layer. Like, oh, Great. man, my sister looked out for me when I was down and out. Mm -hmm. Like, damn, yo, now, uh, you know, so. Yeah. It was it was it was wild, man. It was a wild three months, and you know I don't think we out the woods yet, but we we are inching closer to at least things getting back to normal. And right. I think by the by the time this is all said and done, COVID gonna just be, mm -hmm. you know, just one of those things we see the commercials about. Yep. You know, like has your COVID been acting up <laughs> yeah. lately, or yep. you know, have mm -hmm. you come in contact with anybody? We have this lawsuit, yep. you know, and I, I think that's what's going to be like everybody adapt, and you know we. We survival. We were born to, to survive yep. until and that's you know, what New Yorkers do, though. <laughs> that's what New Yorkers that's do. That's what we about. Um, so you mentioned, you know, just being now married mm -hmm. and having to go through through this process, and your wife is going through her process mm -hmm. as well. So, how were you a support to her? Just being there to listen. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of these situations, there was absolutely nothing I could do about, mm -hmm. but just be a. Uh, just an ear, a shoulder to lean on. You know what right. I'm saying? Um, there, there were things going on in her job. I, I can't even mention. Yeah, of course. You know, but it, it was it was really crazy how people that were in the healthcare business mm -hmm. were reacting to to COVID crazy. and the type of mm -hmm. malpractice that was going on and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, again, there's absolutely nothing I could do but just you right. know pray through it and you know you just try to put positivity out there yeah, I was you know let's, let's watch Netflix let's watch some mm -hmm. funny stuff let's try to take our mind off it and, and here's why I ask that question it's because as men we have this this gear where from young we were taught that we are financial providers right mm -hmm. and that we are just that that's what we have to be there for you know that's what our value system is right mm -hmm. so I think that now what's become of it is that's the only thing that we can provide like that's what being a provider yeah. is but what i'm trying to tell people is that there is more than one way to provide yeah right because what happens in a lot of relationships is if you can't be the financial provider you don't know how to 
like 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 be in that relationship. You right. don't know how to be in that marriage, and then mm-hmm. you start resenting your partner right. because now she's making more money than you, mm-hmm. and you're trying and you're trying to your know, work, bust your ass, and mm-hmm. get there. Mm-hmm. But she could be making more money than you. Right. right. But the thing is, what else do you have to provide in that relationship besides just financial? Right. Because sometimes your woman doesn't need to be financial. Sometimes she needs an ear. Sometimes yeah. she needs a shoulder. Sometimes yeah. she needs you to be present. Yeah. And if you don't know how to express, if you don't know how to communicate, if you don't know how to be vulnerable, mm-hmm. you'll be very, you'll be a one-dimensional. Yeah. You know, spouse. Yeah. Right. So it's mm-hmm. it's very important. You know, what I'm saying that I, for you that you that you did that. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that we need more men out there to really understand that if for some reason something happens, you know, we have COVID, some people get laid, laid, laid off, whatever the case is, if you are not in that position to be the financial provider that you that you elevate and you step up and understand that your worth isn't only just tied to what mm-hmm. you can provide financially. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so salute to you on that. Um, Appreciate it. it it's, it's, it's a lot of humility involved in that. A hundred percent. For one, I think, you know, I'm not going to go down the toxic masculine route, but no. I think it's a little erroneous for us to teach our, our young men to only bring money to the team. And that's and I think that's been passed down generationally. And I hear a lot of um, my friends, they tell me, T, like, I, I just want him to be present. I just need him for mental support, emotional support, mm-hmm. and he doesn't provide it. He's mm-hmm. angry all the time mm-hmm. because he can't bring in money, but that's not what I need. Right. I need him to be present. Mm-hmm. And so if we kind of have to rewire what we teach our men mm-hmm. and our young boys so that they can work and, and, and be amongst this world mm-hmm. and move differently and move mm-hmm. in multiple ways right. and, and not just one way. And I always mm-hmm. say that we, we're living in an Amazon world, but we're teaching our men Toys R Us value. <laughs> yeah. And we're Toys R Us. Yeah. Yeah, gone, gone, gone. And so, and so, if we don't elevate, if we don't learn how to just be different, mm-hmm. act different, um, it's it's like it's gonna be detrimental to our homes. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be de- detrimental to our community. It's gonna yeah. be detrimental to our women. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I salute you, man, um, 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 for being a leader and in, in, in that aspect, bro. So it. when it comes to to faith, right? So mm-hmm. uh, you know. Faith without works, we already know it's dead, right? Mm-hmm. So, what I salute you for is you put in a lot of a lot of work. Like you put in a lot of work down through the years, mm-hmm. and I and, and I've been a witness to that, right? And now it's like you said, within the last couple of years, you went on your spiritual journey, your faith journey, yeah, right? And so now you activated both. Mm-hmm. And I and now I've seen opposite where people have. Faith, 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 all spiritual, spiritual, God, 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 church, 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 mm-hmm. right? And then they're waiting. They're waiting, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, like, yeah. and nothing's happening, and they're mm-hmm. waiting. Mm-hmm. And then they get upset, you know? And it's like, you have to have a balance of, of both, right? Mm-hmm. So, so kind of talk to me a little bit about that, um, of, you know, about where your work ethic came from, mm-hmm. um, and then how you activated, and once you activated the faith, how everything came together, right? And for you to be able to get your ultimate goal, which was your shot. Yeah. All right. So I'm a, I'm gonna try to shorten this story yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. It, it was a a really long journey that I had with God. A really, really, really like long, long, long lot. As you, I'm 36 and I'm just now <laughs> getting on deck. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so no, it, yeah. this was a really, really, really long journey for me. Um, I was always taught to go go hard, hustling, and mm-hmm. and to put time in and go. You know. Mm-hmm. You got to go 200% as hard if you want to get ahead and this and that. Mm -hmm. Um, I learned um, around the time I got removed from an apartment Mm -hmm. back in Left Rack. Shout out to Left Rack. I got got removed from my apartment in Left Rack. Mm -hmm. They didn't renew my lease because there were some technicalities Mm -hmm. with with my moms who had moved. Like, I had my own apartment then. I moved into hers. I took over the apartment. I'm waiting on the lease to come. Wow. I'm like, I'm gonna take over the lease. Wow. The rent's low. They found the crib in Tampa. Sent a letter like, listen, we not renewing your lease. My old lease Jeez. and my other apartment was up. I had this place. They pretty much told me, yo, you have three months to get all this stuff out. Jeez. So 
I did that and I, I was hurt. Like, damn, I, I built I built up like a, a mock shop in the living room. Wow. I was gonna use one of the um, middle bedrooms for a studio. Like I had it all mapped out and I was actually putting everything together so I could just make music when I want to, I could cut hair when I want mm -hmm. to, you know, but other things happen. Mm -hmm. So Life. Yeah. it was so far out of my control mm -hmm. that it was like, yo, all I wanted to do was just continue this and I just needed that lease to come through. Mm -hmm. And just the fact that there was absolutely nothing I could do about the situation, I couldn't fight for it because my name wasn't on the mm -hmm. lease at mm -hmm. that time because I just had the other apartment and I let that lease yep, go. So. Once I finished, I was like, yo, I'm moving in. Yeah. So I couldn't fight it, couldn't go to court, couldn't do anything. I was like, yo, I'm, I'm really like stuck yeah. here. Yeah. And mom's down in Tampa, pretty much all my family out of state. Mm -hmm. It's like, I got a sister in Long Island, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm probably going, you know, this it's Suffolk County. Like I'm still working mm -hmm. the Woodside. Yeah, that's that's a that's a trip for those who don't know. That's a journey. Yeah. So um, what happened was I, I ended up putting all my stuff in storage, mm -hmm. lost the apartment, um, and I was just out out here mm -hmm. looking for looking for a room. So my sister was like, "Yo, just come through." Yeah. You know, or whatever. So shout out to Mika. Thank you, yo. Much love. Happy you recovered. She, you know, helped me out. Mm -hmm. I stayed in Long Island for a little bit. And as I was moving out there, I was having just on the road, just having long talks with God, just me and him talking. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't want this ever to happen again. Right. That was, that was my first thing. I don't want this ever to happen to me again. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I want to be good. I want to do good. Mm -hmm. And I just started naming the things that I wanted to him. Like, yo, I, 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 I'm tired of, you know, running the streets. I'm tired of, you know, just not knowing really what I'm doing and just running a million miles an hour in right. place. You know, I want to get closer to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I chalked it up to him. I think yeah. it was him that, that just, took me just gave it all. Out, yeah. of the, out of the situation. Like, yo, man, you separate yourself from everything. I, I felt like he was just mm -hmm. removing me out of that. Mm -hmm. And that drew me closer to him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, you, you, you think you got this, you think you got that. All right, everything else is gone. Now, mm -hmm. now it's me and you. Right. You've been ducking me. What's mm -hmm. up? Mm -hmm. Talk to me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had those long talks and just stated what I wanted. You know, I, in the midst of that, I told him, like, yo, I, I want to find something steady because whatever I'm doing for myself moving forward, mm -hmm. it's going to be for my legacy. Right. Like, you, these are legacy. This is not legacy for me to get right. the next fly kicks or me to go buy jewelry or go on vacay and try to find the fling wherever I go. Like, right. nah, I'm... I'm, I'm I'm done wasting my time. Not wasting my time because I that built a lot of experience and character mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm tired of doing that. Right. So I was just like, you know, I, I'm done. Maybe about two months after I moved <laughs> into mm -hmm. my sister's, mm -hmm. I met Tamara, which mm -hmm. turned to be my wife, and she's a pastor. Wow. I, I know what I asked for. Right? You know what I'm saying? I know I know I wanted to get closer to you right. and, and everything like that. And you know, I'm not I'm not a churchy guy. Right. I never did that. And mm -hmm. I I had my head like, yo, the only way I would do that is if probably my significant other was involved. You know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> and, and not only involved, but like the <laughs> the the one running the, the whole like, oh man, so all, all of that, I, I really, you know, just the things I wanted, I, I tried to make sure that it wasn't a totally selfish thing, but something that could benefit me and anybody attached to me moving forward. Right. And I think God gave me all of that. Mm -hmm. And that just continued helping me on my journey. And mm -hmm. I had my wife baptize me because I ain't know where, yeah. like, yeah. why. Who better? I, who, who better? Who, who knows me who better, better and mm -hmm. knows my heart and everything like that. So... I did all of the studies and everything like that. Mm -hmm. I do I do church weekly, and I'm still yeah, working growing. and moving yeah, still on that journey. Who knows why I'm a land? Because I really don't know. Mm -hmm. But there's there's a couple of things that like even when it comes to like me making music, like mm -hmm. there's certain things I'm not gonna be saying like that right. anymore. Like for one, I'm not gonna be calling you nigga. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be calling myself nigga. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm not. Like I'm not with that no more because that that was never really meant for us. And right. Back to me, like just having perspective on it now, 
that's the whitest thing that I could call you. You know what I'm saying? That's not ours, yo. Like, that was made for disrespecting us. And granted, we take things as a people, we take it and flip it. And make the lemonade out of it. We take it and flip it. It's like, nah, no more of that. Like, we, we don't got to do that no more because we... For one, we got the numbers out here, we got the tools, we got the talent, mm -hmm. and the only thing that's missing is, is, is the unity for that. Right. Um, but yeah, back to the journey, um, yeah, I, I, th I felt the journey was wild. It, it, it increased immensely within the last like three, four years because I, I went through massive changes. Like I, I just decided to, you know, do the vegan stuff and just mm -hmm. everything that I that I was doing with, with my wife, mm -hmm. I felt like it was possible, like no matter how crazy it might have sounded or impossible that it might have sounded it's like man like i can really do this out right. and that speaks to like having a significant other that's down to support you and a significant other that you want to support you because exactly. you you could be out here and just meet a bunch of people and they they're down for yeah. you but if that connection is not there you're not gonna want none of that like right. nah just keep that over yeah. there oh, you know what i'm saying so the fact that I'm, I'm getting the support from a person that I, I wanted, wanted it, that want. from, mm -hmm. that, 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 that's like the game changer. So mm -hmm. now it's like anything that's being done for me, I, I'm thinking, all right, what's the game plan for us to do it? Not like, damn, can we do it? Mm -hmm. Like all of that is gone. gone. Like mm -hmm. I'm moving with a different type of confidence. And I there. think everybody could just move with that because literally whatever I did, the next man, Ben did that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I probably saw like, you know what, you know, he had to do it for me to say, yo, I'm going to do it. Right. So, you know, it's just, you know, moving with that with that confidence that you can accomplish whatever you set out to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and God helped me with that. My wife, my family, mm -hmm. my pops, moms, like all of it culminated into this. The homies, yep. all of that led to this right now. Mm -hmm. well, so, so if I'm, you know, somebody who wants to be an entrepreneur, I have a, I, you know, I got a little bit of change. Mm -hmm. And, um, I want to start a business. Mm -hmm. Like, like, what are the steps? What do I do? All right. Uh, for one, you identify, you know, and I'm talking like just the pure basics. Pure basics. Yeah. You gotta identify what you what you have a a will to learn. Like, not necessarily talent for, but something mm -hmm. that you don't mind doing mm -hmm. because you love to do it. Like, you right. can suck at something, but if you love doing it, like, the, you're gonna develop that talent over time. Right. So you find something that you don't mind doing every day, 24/7, mm -hmm. moving forward. Right. Mm -hmm. Once you find that. You start working on that skill, mm -hmm. right? Once you work on that skill, it's like you know what? I can I can monetize this skill. Right. You go to a CPA. It's real simple. You go to you know any your, your tax person can do it. Mm -hmm. You know you can ask around relatives. You can go online to the uh, to the government website and you can fill out forms for you to start actually start a business. Mm -hmm. So you come with a name for your business mm -hmm. and you uh, you pretty much look up what's required. Mm -hmm. for each so I wanted to be a barber mm -hmm. before I could you know legitimize my business I had to have you know a certification from the school right. so I had to go to barber school finish that up you know take my uh, infectious diseases course mm -hmm. do the practical and everything mm -hmm. once I was done with that I came with the name precision 360 mm -hmm. all right I'm gonna take that let me go to the state it's precision 360 LTD being used mm -hmm. no all right let me get that I send you over my my, my money for, for started it's under five hundred dollars mm -hmm. so you know it is it's possible you know what i'm saying right. like it's a small investment for your future right. um so you do that and then you you just find other ways like do you want to have a, a location do you want to mm -hmm. you know move around right. you know mm -hmm. like there's so many different avenues for you to execute a business do you want to be online only there's mm -hmm. so, there's so many things yeah, you can do online yeah, without yeah. any personal contact now right. like the information is out there and i think you know we just have to have that thirst to get to the water because the water is really it's it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's like you, you don't have, I don't have to convince you to go to nope. Google. Nope. You know, all the answers are pretty much out there right now. It's about, mm -hmm. you know, just keying in on whatever caters to what you're interested in and right. you'll be fine. But it's, it's really a, a, a simple thing. You know, for me, I can only speak to like my particular experience. Like, you know, once I got certified, I asked the school, like, mm -hmm. listen, do I have shop placement? And they placed me mm -hmm. with a person that graduated from that school who had a shop in Woodside. Right. Shout to Filthy Rich. Mm -hmm. So that's how I ended up over yeah. there. Dope, Interview, rocked out there for ten years, grinded, 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 and you, mm -hmm. you know, you build up a clientele, you build, you build yeah. personal relationships with people, mm -hmm. and and that that's what really takes you 
over the top. Like mm-hmm. the support from the people that you servicing. Yeah. You know, you you build that camaraderie, that friendship, mm-hmm. that brotherhood and sisterhood. Because mm-hmm. the ladies come too for cuts and everything. Mm-hmm. Um. Sure. You know, you build that up, and then before you know it, you you have enough established where it's like, you know what, I, I might be able to step out on my own. Some people out the gate with it. Yeah. Some people start in their backyards with it. Look, look how I'm hooking him up. Like, yeah. this this is backyard action right here. Mm-hmm. So you, yeah, man. there's so many different ways to do. You don't have to be in the shot. All you have to do is technically get certified from a barber school. So if someone asks you what's up, you can provide some type of validity to your profession. Right, and then you can you can just take off from there. There's so many different options, and so don't, many. and don't get cut from barbers who have not taken that infectious disease course. Word, please. word, please, please. That is paramount right now. Like if he never took an infectious disease course. Don't don't bother. He's not cleaning his clippers, and this is not the time for you to deal with anybody who's not cleaning their stuff off properly. Like, trust me. He said a mouthful. Trust me. He said a mouthful right there. <laughs> he said a mouthful right yeah, there. Yeah, man. Um, so. It seems that, like, with the story that that you just told, so mm-hmm. once you were, you know, you know, you were evicted and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and then you started going from Suffolk County um, to Woodside, yeah. and I, I can tell you that's that's a long, <laughs> it's a long drive. I, 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 yeah. And I remember coming to you, mm-hmm. and, and I was like, Yo, where where are you now? And he was like, Yeah, I'm out in, in, in Suffolk. Yeah. I said, Hey, and you driving here? <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting is is because that particular journey. Mm-hmm. Created the dialogue that mm-hmm. you were able to have those long drives with God. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And so, so it, it just shows that if that never happened, you know, you weren't rerouted. Like you were still on the destination. Yeah, right. You were mm-hmm. still, you were still going to where you needed to be. Mm-hmm. But in order to get to where you needed to be, yo, you need to have those talks with God. Yeah, right, yeah. right. And, and 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 that's amazing to see. So even if you think that you're hitting a little bump in the road, mm-hmm. lean into it. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like embrace mm-hmm. it, lean into it, because you never know if that action or or, or what you think is a misstep mm-hmm. is actually just steering you in the right direction mm-hmm. to your to your destiny, man. Yeah. So, um, so it, it's it's really good to hear that, man, because sometimes we get so discouraged. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. and we just go, okay, well, what was me? And never and all these bad things keep happening to me, right. and I don't know what I'm gonna do next. Mm-hmm. But if you actually lean 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 into it, and and see the, the the bigger picture of it, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like you can come out, man, smile like roses, man. And yeah, in which you have, man. And, <laughs> and I'm so it. proud of you, bro. Appreciate you, um, man. Because I've seen the growth down down through the years. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And then it's it's so dope as a friend to say like one day, oh yeah, I, I want to shop. You know, I want to shop. I want to shop. Mm-hmm. And then and be able to finally see the ribbon cutting and be there for yeah. it. Yeah. I know I said it earlier, but but for me. That was a proud moment for me because mm-hmm. I was just like, man, my man did it, you know what I'm saying, and he did it the right way, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and and look at him now, mm-hmm. um, and he's somebody that people can look up to now. But when, when little boys come in for for a cut, they, you know, they, they you can say, no, I own this shop. Mm-hmm. This and, and, and if you want something, it may not be this, but if you want something, mm-hmm. then then you can have it too, right? You right. know, um, so you know, you you, you are. Know a leader in the community, um, and we need a lot more lo- like a like you. So I I like that you actually are, are talking about our young black men, especially being able to express man. Because honestly, man, it's something that we need more of. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the stuff that came down from generation to generation to generation. Mm-hmm. Some of it's good, but some of it yeah. is comes from a toxic place yeah and yeah. we have to know when to break down those generational curses and break mm-hmm. down those generational boundaries man yeah. um and push through and teach in a different way mm-hmm. and not view everything as feminine right and i think that's where it's just like oh why do you think that they, they always say that women are ahead of us right or mm-hmm. smarter quote unquote right mm-hmm. where does that come from because they were given the tools at an early age. Yeah. Which is what yeah. happens in a, a lot of the other communities, That's right? So if the other communities have access to things that we don't have access to, then guess what they're doing? Mm-hmm. They're, they're accelerating at a different rate. Yeah. So if, as a woman, if you have the tools at three years old, and the parents say, can, can, can communicate, express, know what love is, mm-hmm. want a relationship, want mm-hmm. certain things, it's important. Mm-hmm. And you're telling your boys, man up, be quiet, yeah. shut up, just yeah. know, just bring in the money. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's what you're here for. Provider, mm-hmm. and that's it. Then, what do you think that we're gonna grow up and be? Yeah. Our value system is, is, is gonna be money, a place of power. Mm-hmm. So, we need all of the money, 
and if we don't have it, then we don't know how to operate yeah. in, in the society. You know what I'm saying? So there's more money is power, but there's also other things that's power. Communication mm -hmm. is power. Mm -hmm. Vulnerability is power. Love is power. It's like Love people power. forget that. Like mm -hmm. this, we've been we've been conditioned so long to to just only provide, and that's one it. thing. And it's like, yo, just come with the money. Come with the money, and and don't do anything else. And that's why why the divorce rate so high. That's why sex and money. You know, our families are. Uh, you know, most most of the time, mm -hmm. it's like, yo, I got a bunch of step brothers, sisters. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I can speak from experience. Like it it goes down like that because you know you'll have one person that that might be operating on a pure love and you know stability and. I want to care for you. And the other person was like, yo, you're not going to do these things unless I bring that bread in. So right. I'm only going to do that. And that's it. And that, that causes a lot of friction. Wow. Because it's pretty much love versus money within a household. Mm -hmm. And it's going to break it up. Right. It's going to break it up. Because now the marriage is, is essentially looked at more of a business mm -hmm. transaction mm -hmm. than an actual union. Right. And that's what's it's kind of getting away from what marriage was intended to be. Right. You know, and, and that's what really hurts us and it hurts us the most in our community. Right. And you know, you you have that mixed in with, you know, the way our culture goes where it's like, you know, you wanna you wanna earn and have earnings just to shine on the next person or right. make yourself look attractive to the next person. It's like, yo, why are we not honoring taking care of our home right. instead of being out there stunting and trying to look fly and everything like that. It's just it's it's a whole lot of things that that we have to recalibrate within our own community mm -hmm. before we even able to go out full on 100% and, and unify for real and, and really be able to make changes, like true, true, true changes. Because right. I feel like we just, we fragmented because our personal interests have mm -hmm. trumped what the greater good is. And that, that, right. that leads to, you know, what I was talking to God about, like, I don't want any anything that, that, that only benefits me I don't want to be a part of it, yo. Yeah. I, I really don't want to be a part of it because it's not about me no more. Like right. it's it's about me. It's about my wife. About the future family. It's about mm -hmm. whoever's around me. It's about who I gotta make sure makes money in the it, like mm -hmm. anything selfish. I don't want no pieces of it because I know it's not gonna be good for me in the long run. And no. if everybody gets on that just just that basis, we could all be like, you know what? I could set this to the side, even if you know like. Even if we had proud, we never did because nah, we cool nah, like that. Nah, nah, but even if we did, like, we we need to have the will to be like, yo, let's talk this through. Yeah. Let's bury the hatchet, mm -hmm. get over that, say our apologies, move on as men. Mm -hmm. What are we gonna do now? Right. What? How are we gonna, you know, benefit ourselves moving forward? Because it's it's quite obvious to everybody, mm -hmm. we down here right. when it when it comes to importance mm -hmm. and you know. I guess how people view us and everything like that. We at this point, I feel like we good for for entertainment purposes, and right. that's totally trash to me. Shut up and dribble. Right. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's trash to me. I think you know just mm -hmm. everybody just really getting together. And I love the protests. I absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. I love everybody standing up, even people that are not people of color, just standing up for what's right. Right. When the dust clears, mm -hmm. and the dust will clear, mm -hmm. we need to keep pushing 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 it might it's not going to be in the form of a process it's right. going to be in the form of two hands shaking right. it's going to be in the form of yo let's try to buy this property over here mm -hmm. let's try to get that house over there it's going to be like yo let's go with our local politician and see what's going on with the regulations and everything like that mm -hmm. and really dive into our own communities and, and really yes. ask these questions and, and get the information necessary mm -hmm. for us to move on and we could do this we could do this solo anybody else that's with us great mm -hmm. but this this mission is going to be even more valid when we when we come together on our own facts you know and i i think it's necessary that's why i, I decided to you know of course i had help you know the entrepreneurship for the parents and everything mm -hmm. like that but i knew this is a, a very key element towards towards inspiring others and and towards just becoming a piece of the ongoing trend because I see it more and more just black owned businesses mm -hmm. popping up all over the place mm -hmm. and I love it right. I absolutely love it and there's even people doing 9 to 5 like yo I have to open up my business on the side exactly. too and there's never to knock anybody that works in 9 to 5 if you're going to do that you're going to get 40 years of your life 
just make sure, and I implore y'all, just make sure that that compensation is is right, and they treating you right, right, and they treat you like a human when you there, and not an expendable piece to that company. That happens way too much, and if you feel that way, just start your own. It don't matter what you're doing, just start your own. If you feel that way, there's no way to work, there's no way to go, because that's gonna affect you at home. That's no way to, to go in and operate. You you doing this for eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 hours, and then you come home, and then you have a friction with the, with the wife or the husband or the kids and all that. Like, that's no way to live. There's no way to live. So if you're not absolutely loving that, like, love your nine to five. If, if that's what you went to, if that field is your field, love it. Go into it, grow through it, you know, elevate yourself through it. Do what you have to do. Just make sure when, when push come to shove, that that company values you as a, as a human and not just a cog in their system. That's all I can say about that. Dope, brother. Um, so with that said, man, we're all, you know, we're pretty much a wrap here, man. But first, um, if, if, if there's any type of advice that you want to give our young brothers out, out there on how to deal, you know, uh, with their mental health on yeah. expression mm -hmm. or what, whatever it is, brother, mm -hmm. yeah. let them know. Um, like ever ever since I was young, I, I had like issues just talking, mm -hmm. you know, just mm -hmm. just talking. Period. I was right. I was shy, timid, like little brother syndrome. You know, everybody <laughs> loud shy and boisterous brother. and everything, <laughs> and I'm just off to the side. Like, mm -hmm. so I that was something I really, 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 you know, had to work through. Like, mm -hmm. of course, you you get a little help from the parents, but yeah. like another person really can't, you know, really understand what's like happening within you, you know what I'm right, saying, right. so, you know, the, I, I suggest, you know, uh, a few of the broskies that, that I know, a few of the homies that I know, it's like, yo, see someone, mm -hmm. have a seat with somebody, reach out to someone, like, just, you know, talking to, to one, two, three, however many people you comfortable with talking to, it, it's cool, like, mm -hmm. expressing yourself when, when you're going through these times is, is, is good, key. because you don't harbor these feelings and those feelings come out in the wrong ways they come out in the form of depression they come out in the form of destruction mm -hmm. they come out in the form of just spousal abuse not, yeah. yeah and just not caring being indifferent mm -hmm. being indifferent is just as destructive as being destructive right so um you know definitely you know it's it's, it's key that we we talk to one another and, and we we seek out these these answers and you know mm -hmm. these these not i wouldn't say handouts but these these avenues to help us go through this because mm -hmm. as as blacks in this country the normal problems are the normal problems and those are heavy right then we have our problems that not everybody else goes through it so i think it's very important for us to talk to one another in that aspect as well because life is hard like life is never easy none of that life is hard but being alive as a black person in today's world is a whole nother mm -hmm. you know that's that's another weight on your shoulder so mm -hmm. it's key for us to talk about it talk about it and and you know and if you have a hard time expressing verbally you know i challenge you to journal um yes you know yeah. you know it's not just this whole thing of dear diary like what they you mm -hmm. know it's, it's not feminine but right you know yes. what i'm saying get your feelings out in one way or another man mm -hmm. um because start start at least start somewhere you know, so you can start the healing, you know, mm -hmm. and you can release yeah. um, your emotions in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. um, so let the people know where they can follow you. Give them all your social okay. media. All right. So um, my personal page is uh, 360 FCF, 360 FCF. And the FCF stands for fam come first. Shout to my guy. Shout to the broskies. Mm -hmm. um, my barber page is Precision 360, mm -hmm. P-R-E-C-I-S-I-O-N 360. Yep. on Instagram and my barbershop page still under construction we about to really get back to it is the concierge grooming parlor the concierge grooming parlor so you know visit hit me with a follow mm -hmm. if you like an appointment just check out Terrors right here yeah, I'm trying to tell you <laughs> COVID messed um, me up I mean, I'm trying to tell you it's, yeah. it's, it's looking alright yeah. right now I got, I got one last piece of info for y'all because yeah. I, I definitely wanted to touch on this during the cut yeah yeah so um Humility is key when you moving through this thing called life. So very there's always like there's always gonna be something more. Always. always. So never be never be comfortable with exactly where you at and always, you know, look for ways to 
to improve in any any part of your life that you you know that you want to improve. Mm -hmm. um, I say that to say, just me becoming a barbershop owner, right? Like there's there's truth in that, and there's also certain things that a lot of people don't understand. A lot of barbershop owners don't want to speak about this. Mm -hmm. So I got about ten minutes, so we should be good. Mm -hmm. All right. So for one, you know, I appreciate you know just you. You know, expressing you know that that I served in any way beneficial to you. You know, what I'm saying I, I, pre, I appreciate that. So I, I say that to say, like, if anybody catches me like with my you know what on my shoulders, mm -hmm. check me because yeah. there's there's certain things like I'm no different than you. I'm no better than you. I'm no I'm no better than anybody who's even trying to come up or did it or anybody. Like I'm just. Mm -hmm. Me and you are equals no matter what I do and what I did. Me and you is equal. So I just want to tell that to everybody just to get that out of the way. 100%. Right? And I say that because, for one, I'm still looking for ways to improve. So when I say I'm a barbershop owner, that means I just own the business that works in that location. Mm -hmm. So I still answer to somebody called the landlord. Mm -hmm. So that's humility in itself. And I had to have that humble talk mm -hmm. during this COVID like, Hey man, I know I'm not there. So okay. what's up? Yeah, yeah, and that that was another piece of you know just the the mental health thing. Like no one wants to have that conversation. Right. No one wants to be at the mercy of someone else. So that right. that that was just a humbling thing in itself. So I say that to say, just me becoming an owner is kind of like all right, I hit this this certain level, but right. there's still this this still this, this this more to do. Still level. So I'm not nowhere near done with trying to improve everything about my situation. Even if it seems or looks popping right now, there's still more I could do. Mm -hmm. So my next is to be like, all right, cool, I own the business. I mm -hmm. need to own the building that the business mm -hmm. operates mm -hmm. in. Levels, so levels, levels. when I talk to the landlord, all I gotta do is look in the mirror. Right. You know what I'm saying? So there's, there's always, there's always, always, always something more and, and I don't want anybody just to be complacent with anything like yes we enjoy the moment mm -hmm. enjoy these milestones every sure. every every step of the way every piece of the puzzle that you gotta figure out when you're sure. on your way to to this thing called success um and just always look for what's what's next now right. what's next like i'm i'm done right you know right. what i'm saying and and that that's like a key component of being a barbershop owner oh, and i'm i'm talking actual factual to y'all you yeah. know what i'm saying i don't own the building while where I operate my business out of. Mm -hmm. So that's already a thing where it's like, you know what, all right, next up is, mm -hmm. all right, I'm, I'm gonna get the business back up and running, we good, COVID free, hopefully yeah, over yeah, with. Yeah. Next up is, all right, I need to work on finding properties now. Mm -hmm. Because if I can own a business, I can own some land. Right. And you know, you own land, all right, what's the next after that? What else can I own for me to pass down to my loved ones? And, that, and that's what it's about building a legacy and that, that's where my humility kicks in because it's all about what's next. Mm -hmm. This ain't enough. I know for a fact whatever I'm doing now is, is, is not enough. What's, what's next? What's next? And I think everybody get on that wave on what's next. All right, we keep building and building and building and put our life into building up for who's coming after us. We gonna be those portraits on the wall, <laughs> smoking a cigar. You know those portraits. You go to certain people's yeah, homes, yeah, yeah, and that's like that's Bartholomew the yeah. third. <laughs> and he's sitting up there in the chair with a cigar in his mouth, and be like, "I'm trying to, I'm trying to be that portrait on the wall." Mm -hmm. And my wife right next to me in the next portrait, or we in the same one, <laughs> and probably right, be in the same, same one, one together. Don't <laughs> <get yourself>. <laughs> Word, <laughs> we in the same one together, and you know that that's the the type of legacy I want to leave. You know, mm -hmm. and just me getting closer to God, like you, you have a greater understanding. Of you know what's gonna happen, like yo, you live, you born, you live, you die, mm -hmm. and just just knowing that is like, what am I gonna do with this time here? What am I gonna do, you know, with this time here? How am I gonna help the the person that that's from my line mm -hmm. that's coming after me? One hundred. And I'm I'm a, I'm gonna keep that flowing the same way my pops and my moms did with me. It was like yo, they. They talk me into this position I'm in now, so now it's time for me to take that, and use those actions to put the next into position as well. Everybody get on that. We unstoppable. Dope. So I'm just gonna see if there's a comment here. Let me just see. Uh, 
your, your business name is amazing. Oh, Miss Tina said Thank your you. business name is amazing. And it's a successful business. Um, she, also, she also said, can you provide your services at people's homes? Yes, I do. I do uh, house calls. Um, um, I started uh, recently, and um, you know I'm taking a lot of precautions. Uh, I prefer to to cut outside right now, get some fresh air, keep Amazing. that distancing thing going, and you know it's it's a it's a safe barter for for both parties. You know, so you know I finish a cut, he could just make make a mad dash right to the shower. Mm -hmm. I go back to my car. I hit my place. Yeah, yeah. I mad dash to the shower, yeah, 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 yeah. and you know, just keep it like that. You know, I wear gloves, proper PPE, the mask. You know, whatever you guys need. I have 99 percent alcohol. Just uh, we do it like that. I take appointments through text right now for for the um, house call booking. So you could DM me at any one of the pages if you're interested. Um, I'll send you my rates. But uh, I'm just trying to diversify just the services moving forward because I know this is a new day in time. You know, for now, I can't, you know, I can't even do beers in the shop. So, you know, to do a beard outside of your location might be more suitable until possibly phase three mm -hmm. when those those uh, restrictions get lifted in the shop. Yeah, perfect. <clears throat> All right, perfect, man. Listen, that that has been um, one, one part of today's uh, conversation of the heart. I'll be back again at 5.30 talking financial literacy. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, so that's I'm, I'm going to have to tune in, too, because yeah, 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 I'm yeah. trying to brush up on that, get the finances right, too, moving forward. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be, I'll be tuning be in, on Financial literacy, hey. um, black economics, man. Nice. And, and um, you know, building, man. So, mm -hmm. listen, stay tuned. I appreciate you guys, sir. Mm -hmm. Yo, thank you for sir, having bro. me. Yo, you this is my know. bro right here. You already know. Yo, thank you. Yo, I, I, I applaud what you're doing here, and... You know, ever since you know, and you you was talking about this like, yo, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna start putting positivity out into the world, and I'm yeah, seeing yeah. it, and it start you know, post by post, and now is this, now and it's this. like, damn, like, yeah, we moving. He's gonna be on the panel very soon. I'm gonna have to go to the studio, check in with this guy, go past security and yeah. stuff. So hey. I, I'm, I'm loving every step of the process, and you know, it's all positive throughout. So you, like, I, I'm proud of what you've been doing. And you know, I get to, I got to watch you go through your whole situation, and you know, mm -hmm. the marriage and everything mm -hmm. is 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 wonderful to to be around other men that's that's family oriented and really about leaving the legacy behind. Because there's a number of inspiration going back and forth now. Absolutely. So man. that's that's the vibes, man. All right, listen, appreciate y'all for tuning in. Check out back at 5:30 p.m. My boy 360, man. Go get a cup, bro. Pull up. You see me? I'm looking fly. Yeah. Peace. <laughs>